Welcome, foolish mortals, to another episode of the Hitchhiking Host Show. I am your host, your ghost host, <laughs> Wes Troop, and I am back with another special episode this week of See It or Skip It. Last time, we looked, took a look at Adventureland over at the Magic Kingdom, and we saw what I thought you could is a must-do attraction at Adventureland, and some things that you could probably not go on and be fine with it. Um, of course, it's my opinion. Uh, so let's take a look over. We'll move one notch over and check out one of my favorite lands as a kid, and still to this day, Frontierland. So grab those cowboy hats and those shiny belt buckles. We're heading over to Frontierland. Yeehaw! All right, so first up, one of my favorite attractions, and I'm going to talk more about that, Splash Mountain. The verdict definitely is see it. Uh, Splash Mountain is the first Disney ride that I ever went on and will always be one of my all-time favorites. I also think that it's one of the best attractions Magic Kingdom has to offer. While the big drop might scare away a lot of people, it really isn't as bad as it looks. It's one of, if not the best, log flume ride ever, and a lot of that has to do with what's inside of the attraction. Based on the stories of Br'er Rabbit, the animatronics of the characters like Br'er Bear, Br'er Fox, and of course Br'er Rabbit himself, along with many other critters, are terrific. Basing a ride off of Song of the South was a big risk, but it certainly paid off, and now park guests can be familiar with these awesome characters. The music throughout is wonderful, from How Do You Do, to Everybody Has a Laugh in Place, and of course, Zippity Doo Dah. You'll be humming one of these tunes for hours afterwards. It's also one of the longest attractions in the park, so you certainly get your bang for your buck. While you do get wet along the way, I usually dry off pretty quick. Splash Mountain is a must-see attraction that is still one of Disney's bests. So definitely see Splash Mountain. Now, we're going to head over to Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. And the verdict on that attraction is it is a see it. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad was the second ever Disney ride I went on. And is one of the few rides I've gotten to ride on every single Disney vacation, including over at Disneyland. It's always a lot of fun, no matter how many times I ride it. It's also a good coaster for kids to try if they think they can handle something a little rougher than Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, and most of the family who aren't coaster fanatics should be fine with it as well, as there's no big drops or anything like that. The theming is fantastic. I love all of the settings you go through, from the back cave at the beginning, to the rocks that look like they're about to collapse, and of course the dinosaur bones above you. I would like if they added the dynamite effects that they have at Disneyland in the Magic Kingdom version as well. There's also so many little touches and fantastic props to see along the way as you speed by, like the goat on top of the hill. I still notice new things all these years later. I always make sure to designate a fast pass somewhere on my vacation for the wildest ride in the wilderness. So Big Thunder Mountain is definitely a see it for me. Now, heading over to something a little more <laughs> interesting here. Uh, Tom Sawyer Island. The verdict on this one is skip it. Uh, Tom Sawyer Island is an attraction that I don't have a whole lot of experience with. I've only made the journey over to Tom Sawyer Island once back in 2012. Taking the raft over to this island is a cool idea, but it could take a little while to wait if you just missed the raft to take you to the other side. Believe me, I know. 
Unfortunately, as soon as I got off the raft onto the island, I felt like I had made a big mistake and wanted to swim right back over as it felt like I could be doing something a lot more entertaining somewhere else. I do think kids could get more out of it as it's basically a big playground to do things like explore some dark caves and go through a fort, but adults may find themselves looking at their watches. I feel the area could really use some updates and changes, including a possible revamp of theme, as a lot of people would only be familiar with Tom Sawyer nowadays if they're forced to read it in school. I'd be tempted to go over again if Aunt Polly's reopened to try the great fried chicken, but unfortunately, it's closed. Aunt Polly's was a little restaurant on the island. Uh, maybe if I had done Tom Sawyer Island as a kid, I'd be more nostalgic towards it. But really, I didn't care then, and I don't care now. <laughs> so, in my book, Tom Sawyer Island, skip it. Now, heading over to an eatery in Frontierland, Pecos Bills. Uh, is, will it be an eat it or a don't eat at it? <laughs> and I give the verdict for this is see it. Or as we said last time, as Weird Al would say, eat it. Pecos Bills is one of the best counter service restaurants the Magic Kingdom has to offer. They redid their menu a few years back, changing from burgers and fries for a Tex-Mex menu which was a great move. A few of my favorite items off the menu are the Taco Trio special, including a buffalo chicken taco, as well as the Hades nachos, which were exclusive to Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party the past few years. Their toppings bar is fantastic as well, with pretty much anything you could want for your meal. One drawback is even though there's a ton of seating in this venue, it still can be very busy, and on one trip I found myself eating on a trash can by Splash Mountain, so plan your meal time wisely. Pecos Bills is always serving up a good meal, and I always feel that you get your money's worth. And now, finally, one more over in Frontierland, we're going to talk about... The Country Bear Jamboree. And my verdict is... See it. While there are many people who can't stand this show, The Country Bear Jamboree is one of my favorite shows and an all-time favorite attraction in all of Walt Disney World. While you can see animatronic shows like this elsewhere, this is certainly one of the best ones and is an experience that both children and adults can enjoy. It's got a ton of rewatchability as well, as I can see it at least two to three times a vacation. Plus, it's easy to get in and a nice ten minutes to sit down and relax in the air conditioning. The characters are brilliant. From our Master of Ceremonies, Henry, the Bear Band, Liverlips McGraw, and of course, the hysterical Big Al. I absolutely love all of the songs, including All the Guys That Turned Me On, Turned Me Down, Blood on the Saddle, and Old Slewfoot. I'm not ashamed to say that I could recite the entire show by memory. Back in 2012, there was a refurbishment that shortened the show, which I'm not a fan of, but I've become used to it, and I certainly would rather have a shorter version of it than none at all. Country Bear Jamboree is a Disney classic and an attraction that I'd chain myself to the building to if it was on the chopping block. All right, well, those are my do's and don'ts on Frontierland. Only one don't. I told you guys I love Frontierland for the most part. <laughs> and uh, yeah, definitely some great attractions that I think are must-dos on that side of the park. But uh, until next time, don't forget to subscribe right here on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Hit Show Show. Watch the show on Facebook. Fa or follow the show on Facebook. There you go. Facebook.com slash Hit Show Show. Follow on the Twitter at Hit Show Show. And a ghost will follow you back. And of course, if you're listening to the show or you want to listen to the show, do so over on Podbean. Hit Show Show dot Podbean dot com. Or download the show on Stitcher or iTunes. Just search under the Hitchhiking Host Show or West Troop. Until next time, don't forget to... Hurry back. Hurry back. F
for the next episode. See ya.